I am going to make a necklace today out of a lot of pretty beads. This is Jasper. It's a semi-precious stone and it's really quite beautiful. So you can do a lot of things with it as well. And what I want to do with it is mix it with silver beads. I've got sterling silver and none of this is expensive. It really isn't. Sterling silver is still of, um, it's almost of little value in terms of, it's not gold, let's put it that way. And I have an interesting pendant silver as a focal point. So I thought what I would try to do is put together a necklace, which is, that's the, the fun thing about it is that you can just experiment and everything. It's not done until you've sealed it. So I'm taking a length of tiger wire. Tiger wire is the reason why I can still make jewellery. I even put pearl necklaces using tiger wire. Tiger wire is as thin as thread. See if you can see it. It's almost as thin as thread, but you can actually control it and I don't have to worry about my fingers not actually getting things the way they should be, the way they used to be. I'm going to take the central piece and thread that on first. Everything that goes in the middle has to go on the string first. Then I want to dig around and get some of the larger of the beads. Thread the tiger wire through the hole. You can see the hole. Thread the tiger wire through. And as you can see, if I pick it up, it's a good size to put beside that piece. So you want another bead of that same size on the other side. Just thread the wire through the hole. And there you have your centre. Now on either side of that, let's put some nice big silver beads either side because this is going to be the central, the focal point of the necklace. Come on, get through. There we go. So you can see it beginning to take shape. And what you can do is just keep threading one on each side so that you keep the same number of beads and the same size of beads. Just keep threading and silver in between on either side. I keep dropping the tiger wire. That's why I basically had to stop with the website, stop selling the jewellery. I can't. My hand works, but not as well as it used to. So you can see that it's beginning to take shape. And you want to keep track of how long it is, keep picking it up and, and looking at how long it is. Because if you don't do that, you'll find yourself suddenly with a rather long necklace. Thread that. Just 
just keep putting it through the hole and just keep matching it with similar sizes of silver beads. Now the thing about silver beads is as, as the necklace gets longer, you can actually go down to much smaller silver beads and it becomes an accent to the beads rather than something more focal, if you will. The big beads that match the same size as the gemstones are really only going to look good at the focal point. After that, you want to start using smaller beads. So we'll go down another size for the jasper. And silver. The thing about jewelry making is that you can go to these websites and you can certainly find a lot of expensive equipment, expensive tools, expensive supply boxes. I use containers that you can buy three for a pound at Tesco. It, you don't have to do fancy expensive stuff. So it, it really is quite affordable. And again, it's good to always keep checking because you want the focal point of the necklace to be up where people are going to, going to see it. Now I can start moving to smaller beads because I'm getting to the point where the necklace itself is going to end. So I'll get a smaller one. Find the hole when the design is like this, it's not always easy to see the hole itself. There it is. Okay, okay, so I keep doing that. Now I want tinier silver beads and I'll leave the link to Curious Gems is where I got these and no I am not endorsing this is not a promotion calm down YouTube I'm just showing a link of where I bought these things And you can also go to other beading shops like uh, Bead Park, the Bead Shop. There are so many and they all have something different. So you can find all sorts of different things. And as you can see, the smaller silver beads begin to just accent rather than be more dominating in the way they look and you want the tinier beads to be the ones that actually go around the back and the reason for that is in in my opinion now I know that there are people who wear quite large bulky beads all the way around in my opinion the, the smaller ones for the back are going to make it easier with your hair, easier with your collar, and it'll, 
I think it looks better. But this is the thing about making your own jewellery, is that you become the one who gets to decide what it looks like. Now I've got very tiny silver beads, two millimeter silver beads. So I have to look for that hole. Save the bead. There's that one. There's that one. So you can see you keep going smaller and smaller as you go along, getting tiny jasper beads and tiny silver beads. And of course, as everyone knows, the tinier the beads, the less expensive the beads and so you can put larger beads at the focal point and what you can find is that if you buy 16 inch or 15 inch strands of each of these sizes you actually have a lot of different things that you can do with each one because you're not making the necklace out of the entire strand. So it's, it's, it's actually a matter of as you sit down and start looking at what you have and thinking about all sorts of things. And the thing about it is that you can, as I say, you can experiment. You can take a look at the different ideas. Just put it on the strand, hold it up, if you like it, go with it. If you don't like it, you just empty the seeds off of the tiger tail and do something else. So it, it gives you the freedom to play around with what you might like in terms of colour, style, anything. And what you will also find the more confident you get in being able to do this, the more you will find your imagination just running wild and you'll find yourself doing a lot of things. The thing about making these to sell, I can tell you, I think the market actually isn't that great simply because we reached a point where people wanted amazing things for a pound sort of thing. I had made one absolutely gorgeous necklace out of Miyuki beads, sparkly and wonderful. And as a sort of a marketing survey, I took it round Brighton and Hove to the beach and just random people asked them, showed them the necklace in the box and, oh, that's beautiful, and said, 25 pounds? Uh, 15 pounds? Uh, it cost me 25 pounds to make it and they were wanting it for a fiver. So if people's, it's because of fast fashion and cheap clothing and all these places competing to see just how cheaply they could sell something that people have begun to see things 
differently in terms of what they're willing to spend. And so I was not surprised when I went in into a leather shop and purchased a leather rucksack. rucksack. And the woman told me that people were coming in and when they asked how much it was, they didn't want to pay for it. They wanted a genuine leather rucksack as big as your back for £25. It, you know, and so I do think that if, you've, if you're thinking, oh, I could do that and sell, not really. You'll just be making them for yourself. I had the most recent jewellery that I had on consignment was in a little bead shop in Brighton. And I bought the supplies at the bead shop. That, what, that was what she wanted, was people to buy the supplies there and make the jewellery with it and then sell it there. However, I'd been in the business long enough to have a feeling of where that was going to go. And so what I did was I chose the items that I wanted to make something with and purchased the entire lot of each bead of each item. And I did that so that people would buy my necklace. When I went back to see how things were going, she told me that I had been right because what people were doing was they were going and studying the necklace, which was my design. They wanted it. They just didn't want to pay for it. So they were going to look at the necklace, but instead of buying it, they kept trying to go back to the displays to find the beads that I had used or the shells that I had used so that they could buy those and make it themselves. And if I'm selling it, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to, to show you, this is what I used and this is how I made it, because then you're not going to buy it from me. But now I'm doing it because I'm not selling them. It's, you know, so I'm just showing you how to make them. Now you can see that we've graduated down to tiny beads. And even though it might not look very long, when you put it on your throat, it actually is a good size. So what you would do is continue according to the length that you want. You now have, as you could see, the chain that's going round your neck is now hidden behind the back. So you can choose at this point to either continue alternating with silver beads or keep the silver beads for another project and just use the jasper beads themselves to finish the last few beads of the necklace. I am going to just use the jasper beads and not, not any of the silver. But I have long hair down my back and they, it won't show. If you have short hair or any other reason you might want to go ahead and, and finish it with the silver beads, entirely up to you. I'm just showing different ways to do it and that's the beauty of it is that you can then decide for yourself yeah you can then decide for yourself which way you want to go and it goes right round to the back you want to make certain as you're holding it up feel for where these are ending and make certain that you have the right length 
to go all the way around your neck. So I'm just going to keep adding more beads. I think I probably need another four or five beads. And I need more. So now you, you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to just pause the video and finish doing the same thing. Because you don't need to watch me just do this over and over and over again. And then I'll be back to show you the finishing. Okay, I finally have it all done. Now you want to give yourself a little slack. You want the ends to almost meet comfortably and I say almost because you're going to be putting a clasp on and jumpering so that's going to add a little bit of length so this is where you want it to fit comfortably and you need to make certain that you have the right length otherwise when you are finished with it you're going to find yourself trying to stretch the clasp and the end together which will eventually break it, or you'll find yourself with the necklace going down under the collar. So you want to make certain that it's at the right height. Once you've gotten that done, cover the container so that you don't knock it over and lose beads, which you then have to go sweeping to find. And then, get wire protectors. These are little pieces which will help you to put the jump ring on. You're going to take the thread, the tiger wire, and you can see that this is, this is going to be difficult for you to see, this is a U-shape. In the, in the, in the middle of it, you can see a little space where the thread is going to go. So you put the thread, let's get this in front of the camera, put the tiger tail into that hole. Come on. It's difficult to do it when it's in front of the screen when I'm trying to hold it this way. I don't know if you can see it. Put the tiger tail in that hole. Okay, let's do this. Otherwise, I'll be here all day. So I've got it down here. There we go. And I've threaded it through that hole. As you can see, the hole is on the side. Let's kind of get it where you can see it. Anyway, then you're going to take the tiger tail up, wrap it round, and there's a because I was dropping beads and I was dropping beads because I was so focused on showing how to put the end on that I forgot I had a loose end and beads were just going through. So got that sorted. What we're going to need is we're going to need the wire protectors.
and I just don't know how I'm going to get this so that you can focus and see it, but it's a U-shaped finding. See if I can get it where you can see it. And on either side, there is a, a tunnel at, at the end of it. And what, what we need to do is put the end of the tiger tail through that tunnel. There. Get it in front of the camera, woman. Okay. So you can see the tiger tail is through that tunnel. Then you put the tiger tail around and put it through the tunnel on the other side. Like that. And then pull it tight. Okay. Now, this is where it got a little hairy, is you want that little length of, of wire coming down. You can't ever figure out where the camera is. And then you're going to bring the beads up and thread this end with the two wires through the little beads as well, because that secures it. So when you get done putting beads through the wire and you pull it taut, this is what you'll have. You know, you'll have the it's so difficult to focus, but you'll have the wire protector and it'll go all the way up to the beads. So I'll keep just finish, I'll finish putting the rest of the beads through. This is the part which is, when you're first doing this, this is the part where you'll tear your hair out. As you get more practice with it, you won't tear your hair out as much. It, it is the tricky bit, but it does get easier each time you do it because you know what to expect and you kind of know that you're going to have to fiddle with it a bit. The most difficult part of it is going to be getting the wire length right because you want the wire to actually end at the correct place for the necklace to be the right length. The, the second end is actually more difficult. It's more tricky than the first one. In order to not have a lot of wire but in the wrong place, this one you really need to focus on keeping it taut and putting the wire through. So it's going to be difficult for me to, to really show you much. But I have shown you how you put the wire through. And now the really tricky bit.
for the second half is making certain that you keep the wire taut to the beads. So that you don't have, and when I was first learning about 35 years ago, I frequently had necklaces where when I finished them and put them on, I had a lot of wire suddenly. Just, you know, because the beads just kind of went Doo! because I hadn't gone it taut enough. And that is the really difficult bit. Now you want, this one is too wide, so I'm going to take the grips and tighten, you know, narrow it up a bit so that it's not quite so big. Then I have to put the wire through the top bead at the same time I'm fighting to keep it taut. Like I said, this is the tricky bit. It'll get easier the more you do it, but as you can see, I've been doing it for all these years and it's still a tricky bit. It never goes very quickly. So let's get this going. I'm going to need to get it going. Okay, I finally got it on. And here's the trick. You have to just thread it through the top bead only this time in order to get it to tighten up. As I say, the first few necklaces that you make, you will still probably have a bit of wire when you're done that will be showing. It'll be in the back behind, so nobody will be likely to see it. But it will be frustrating. It'll be frustrating, but just keep working with it because eventually you will get it. But as you can see, it will never not be tricky. It will always be tricky. Because then you have to go and find the hole with the wire and carefully put it through the hole between the two beads. And this is the trick without leaving a gap in the wire. So what you can do is leave a little gap see if I can show that. You leave a little gap in the hole. I don't know if you can see that. There's a little gap between the beads, just a tiny one. And put the wire in between the beads. Turn it a bit to give yourself some space. Put the tiger wire into the hole if you can see it the first one didn't take nearly this long but I didn't have to have the first one this tight. When you have it tight like that, then everything becomes a bit more tricky. Once you get that wire into the hole, then you just push it through. Come on, get through. Sometimes you might have to pull to get it through.
and then you have to make sure that you keep tightening. And that will not be easy. If the wire gets a bit crimped, you'll have to straighten it out and go again. It's just a very slow process when you're doing the last one. The good news is you won't have to do it for the entire length of this wire this time. there. Finally got it. And again, you want to make certain that it's taut. You want to make certain that the bead stays on the wire. Then, when you've got it through two beads on this end, it's good enough. You can take the wire cutter and just to the wire, just cut off just that. And there you have it. Okay, so now we want the other jumping because now we have the clasp. You can get all sorts of clasps, including magnetic ones. I have used those as well. You've got an opening jump ring and a closed jump ring. What I choose to do in order to make them more stable, more sturdy, is I choose to get a larger open jump ring. And I've shown you how to open those before. Just get it a bit opened up. Just enough. And then put the little jump ring in. Fingers are not wanting to work today. Once you've got it opened, put the little jump ring in and then make sure that you close it completely. want to ensure that there's no gap. It's completely closed. And you have one on the other end. Which is closed. So 
I'm going to take the grips, open this one carefully so that you don't bend anything and put that there. And just keep working with it until you find it completely closed. On the other end, now I'm going to take that and connect it to the wire protector. Open it up, slip the wire protector in, close it carefully, and that part takes practice as well. You want it completely closed. And at first, you might find that to be a bit of a trick. But you do get it. Eventually, and there you have a necklace. So I can test it out to make certain that I got everything right by opening it up. I almost had it. I'm trying to find where that little bit is that the bead that the jump ring goes through. Oh, I can't feel it. I have to see it. I always have to see it. Come on. There you are. Which side is it? Ah, okay. Then I put it on. Ugh. I had to go stand in front of a mirror so I could see what I was doing. I couldn't feel it well enough. But there is the finished necklace with the thing, with the focal. And it's just the right length. And it's nice and sturdy. So that's, that was all it took. As you can see, the stringing bit is the easy bit. When you have wire protectors, that's when it gets a bit crazy, but it's worth it because the wire protectors make certain that the wire does the tiger tail isn't going to go through the crack in the jump ring because it doesn't matter how tightly you close it, there's still a fine opening that a tiger tail wire wire would get through. So you do need the wire protector to save your sanity and your necklace. But there we go. And another time I'll show you how to make earrings to go with it. I have two more of these focals. Three more of them actually. Because I did wonder if I could make earrings with them. They do feel a little bit heavy, but we'll see. I'll try that out before I show you how to make the earrings because this is already going to be nearly an hour long just showing you how to do the necklace. But we got it done. Now I'm going to go make some quiche. <laughs>